Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating these sort of flowing light streaks, these light zips that really add the feeling of 3D to your image, even if you're not using a very 3D image. You just wrap these light these lights around any object in your image and suddenly it really strongly suggests this 3D feeling. Now here I am using this 3D object, this ball, which I did create in Photoshop uh, using the new 3D tools here in CS4. But don't worry, you can really use anything you like and we're just going to use a little path and we're going to wrap this ball with these glowing lights. So let's get started. The next thing we want to do is create a new layer. There we go. Next we're going to go over to the paths panel, which notice we have nothing there, but we're going to change that soon. We're going to grab our ellipse tool. This may be underneath your rectangle or rounded rectangle tools. Just click and hold that and a little flyout menu will appear. Grab the ellipse tool. There we go. And the important part of using this tool is you want to choose the icon in the center. Up here in the options bar for this tool, you don't want the vector shape layer. You don't want the filled pixels. You want the path. And I believe if you hold if you roll over and hold it long enough, you should have a tooltip. Yes, it says paths. That's the one you want. It's got the little pen tool icon in it. Just draw it a, a very thin, wide oval, like so. Next, we want to grab our direct selection tool. This may be underneath the black arrow here down in the lower portion of the tools bar. We want to click and hold that and grab the direct selection tool and select this path. Note when we select the path, we have four anchors. One, two, three, and four here. We actually want to add two more anchors to this. So I'm going to grab my pen tool. And I actually want to come down to the Add Anchor Point tool, right there. And I just want to select and place an anchor, if you can think, behind this object, just behind the edge. So I want to place one just behind the left-hand edge there, and just behind what would be the right-hand edge over here on the right-hand side. So I now have six anchor points. I want to go back and grab the Direct Selection tool, select that anchor point on the back part of the path, in the middle and just hit the delete key to get rid of that. So now we have this sort of C running, this really flat C running along the bottom of our uh, you know, little globe, wet globe shape here. Now what I want to do is grab this path, drag it down to the new path button to save that as an actual path and I want to right click on it and hit duplicate path. I'm just going to name it anything I want. Hit OK. We are going to edit this path one copy here. And basically all we're going to do is select the anchor point that runs behind our globe, right over here on the left hand side, and delete that. So now our zip starts here and begins flowing around the object, just like that. Now what we want to do before we go any further is grab our brush tool and make sure we have this set properly because we're simply going to stroke this path with the brush and then duplicate that. So I want to go to my brush options, set the master diameter to, for this image I find 7 pixels works pretty well, and hardness, make sure that is set to 100%. We're going to start with a very hard brush, we can always blur later, you can't unblur something. So we want to start with a hard brush, we can do all of our blurring later. Also, whoop, didn't want to do that, I want to come over here and select this icon right up here, and this is my brush options dialog box. We're going to check shape dynamics on as you can see and I'm just going to set control for size jitter to pen pressure. I want to make sure size jitter, minimum diameter, all these jitters and roundness and minimum maximum uh, settings are all set to 0% but the control for size jitter I want that to be set to pen pressure. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to right click on this path and I'm going to hit stroke path. I'm going to choose brush and sim simulate pressure. Excuse me. I'm going to hit OK. And if I deselect this path, you can see it's created this nice streak that sort of warps right around my globe. OK, very nice. Now I'm going to select this other path. I'm going to grab my path selection tool. Hotkey for that, by the way, is A. If you can't see that. It's A. And uh, hitting it multiple times will switch between these two tools. So path selection tool. We're going to select that path and hit hold down the shift key and hit the up arrow key four, maybe five times like so. I'm going to right click on this path and hit stroke path. Again with the brush and simulate pressure. I'm going to hit sh hold down shift and move that path up. Remember we're not actually moving the contents of the layer. We're just moving this individual path. Right click the path again. Stroke path with the brush and simulate pressure. We're going to move that path up. Shift, one, two, three, four, five. Right click, stroke path. And we're going to do one more. Oops, make sure we have our path selection tool, not our move tool. There we go. Now that we're up at the top, I want this to kind of, you know, zip off to the end and not wrap back around and just disappear behind the globe. So what I want to do is hit A to switch to my direct selection tool. And I want to select the anchor point, which is very hard to see, right over here on the right hand side and just delete that. 
So now it just goes, you know, comes right out from where, you know, it's behind the ball, comes right out and around, and just kind of is going to disappear out into no man's land. Right click on that stroke path with the brush simulate pressure, hit OK. Deselect that path by just selecting anywhere in the paths panel, and go back to our layers panel. We can see we have all these zips up on their very own layer. At this point, you can hit Command or Control T, and actually you can even do this to the path before you even begin stroking the path. But I might want to angle this a little bit. I can right click and hit skew and just sort of pull this up a little bit. Let me pull this side down a little bit. Like so, just to give it a little bit of an angle. And now what I want to do is duplicate this layer. Command or Control J, and I'm going to shut the top layer off, select the bottom layer. We're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're going to give it a two. Yeah, two, two pixel blur looks good. And I'm going to hit Command or Control U to open the hue saturation options for this layer. I'm going to hit colorize. And I'm going to bump up the saturation all the way up. Matter of fact, take it all the way up to 100. I'm going to bring brightness up to somewhere around 40 to 50. And I'm going to set the hue to a, a green. We're going to try to find a green here. All right, there we go, a nice green. Hit OK. We're going to turn the layer on top of it back on. You can see it's black. I don't really like that. We're going to hit Command or Control U. And we are going to colorize this as well. We're going to make this a very light green. So I'm going to drag the lightness slider over toward the right, drag the saturation slider way over to the right, drag the hue slider over to get us into those greens. And there we go, it looks very nice. I'm going to set the blend mode of this layer, however, to let's try overlay and Overlay is not too bad. Let's try something like color dodge. Maybe that'll give us a better effect. Uh, we're just going to start scrolling through these blend modes until we find something. You know what? Soft light is actually pretty nice. We're going to stick with soft light. And I'm going to select this lower layer. The lower layer would be the uh, blurred layer, excuse me. I'm going to hit Command or Control J to intensify that blur. Maybe hit it a couple times. Really just intensify that blur for our you know, light zips that are wrapping around the circle. Now, notice there's a problem. We have a little bit of that light zip appearing on top of our globe. Super easy fix. I'm going to grab all of these layers and I'm going to group them. So I'm going to select them all, select the bottom one, and hold down my Shift key and select the top, and hit Command or Control G to group them. I can give it a name. I can just name it Zips. And I'm going to apply a mask to that group. Just hit the Mask button. You can see we have a mask on that group. Open up the globe layer or your object layer for that matter, I'm just going to control click that globe to give myself a nice selection to prevent myself from erasing too much of these light zips. And basically I'm going to zoom in on this guy and what I would do is take my brush tool and my brush tool is painting with black. I'm just going to come in here and just paint away all of the additional unneeded you know, edges of these light zips. I'm going to come over to the other side now and just do the same exact thing. Got two more to do, right like that. Zoom back out, Command or Control D to deselect, and there you have it. These nice glowing, flowing light zips that seemingly wrap themselves around an object. Uh, in this case, this object is actually 3D, but you can wrap it around 2D objects as well. So it's a very cool effect to really make your objects pop, appear to be 3D, and have a pretty darn cool effect applied to them. Uh, in the meantime. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Please check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com.